uh, in this session called Updating the Open Definition to meet the challenges of today. So exciting to see all of you. And we are so sad that we cannot be there. We are super jealous of people like attending in person um, the event. Um, okay, so basically the, I'm going to explain a little bit what's this session about and what our goals here. And then Carol, one of my partners is going to explain what is the, the dynamic of the workshop. Um, the workshop it is um, about like thinking and um, the open definition uh, in the context of the new times that are arriving. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit the beginning just to make sure that everyone understands what the open definition is, and then I'm going to explain what are the goals of the of the session. What is the open definition? Um, the open definition is a set of principles that define openness in relation to data and content. Uh, and it's important to remind this, you know, that it's openness in relation to data and content. One thing is an open door and another thing is an open data. And you should take it that in mind when discussing about like the open definition that is always in relation with data and content. In a summary, right now, the open definition can be seen, can be explained as open means anyone that can freely access, use, modify, and share for purpose, for any purpose, and subject at most to requirements that preserve provenance and openness. This is kind of like how we summarize nowadays the open definition. The Open Definition was first published in 2005 um, by the Open Knowledge Foundation, and it has been maintained by the Advisory Council of Experts. And in 12, 2015, the version 2.1 has been released. It has been translated to 41 languages. Uh, it has reached Wikipedia. And the most important thing is that it has become like the base for open databases licensing, and it has influenced a lot um, policy making, academia, and beyond. But since 2015, the conversation about open has expanded both in geography and complexity. The world in 2015 was completely different to what is now. And there is a new generation of thinkers, academia, activists with an agenda that addresses issues that were not fully disclosed when we first started discussing what open means. Um, basically, the world has changed that much that concepts like data extractivism, digital colonialism, racial and gender, racial and gender um, violences were not, uh, or even climate justices were not even taken to, into consideration when we were discussing open in the beginning. Um, so we think it's time to like revisit the definition, having all these things um, in mind. Also, like the other huge part thing that happened since 2015 is that there were like a lot of emerging new technologies that critically challenged the definition and the concept of open. Uh, like for example, intellectual property of medicines to tackle war pandemics, uh, like we have like after the post COVID-19 uh, crisis. Blockchain technologies has emerged and has like widespread um, and supposedly they are based like on open principles. And the hot topic to today is like artificial intelligence, um, which often it bases like the learning of its models on open data. Um, so that triggered a whole discussion on uh, what open means in terms of like in artificial intelligence. So that's kind of like the context of this workshop. We have an open definition. It has worked perfectly in the past. Um, it has like created a lot of consensus, but the world has changed, uh, and we need to revisit it, and we need to see what can be upgraded um, and what can be adapted to face the new challenges today. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass uh, the word to Carol, which is like the partnership leads in the Open Knowledge Foundation, which is going to explain to you what is going to be about the workshop today, how it's going to be the dynamic. Um, over to you, Carol. Hi all, thank you for being here to discuss uh, this important topic with us. Uh, we were really happy to be able to participate uh, in Wikimania because we do understand that the open definition is a topic that is very important for both our communities uh, and it's the base for everything we do. Um, so right now, what do we want to do? We want to listen 
and learn from the Wikimedia community, from you guys, uh, what do you think we need to rethink? Um, like, what is the concept of open right now? And uh, how can we redefine it for the future, the current and the future generations? Uh, how can we generate consensus? Um, we want to understand, like, what are the main points of interest and uh, the points that deserve more attention? uh from um the current the present the current moment uh and we really want to collect suggestions so this workshop is about listening is about uh getting a place for us to discuss about the open definition in a very open and free way uh and learn from you uh how can we generate a more broad and diverse consensus on on this topic uh next slide please pato so what are the examples of what we can discuss here? Uh, we can talk about what's missing in the definition, what's incomplete, what needs clarification. Uh, we can talk about problematic words uh, or even what should not be changed because at the end of the discussion, we can all agree that this shouldn't be changed, that this is okay as it is. So uh, we talk a lot about open today uh, in the world, like, for example, there is open AI, there's uh, open banking, there's open relationships, there's lots of open uh, things, but let's keep the focus on open data and open content, as Patricio explained at the beginning. Um, so, uh, and what's the different meanings of open for different cultures, right? Because we did the session uh, at the beginning of the year at MOSFEST, which was online, and that had slightly a more uh, European-centered context. And then we uh, facilitated the same session at RightsCon in Costa Rica in June, which where we got to have uh, the perspective from Latin American audiences. And now we want to have the perspective from the Wikimedia community and uh, of course the Asian communities that are present in the event. So um, we want to know how different cultures can be um, acknowledged by this consensus and uh, how the definition can be useful for everybody in the current times. Uh, next slide. So uh, the first step is to get him familiar. Uh, so um, at the first slide, we had a, a QR code, but uh, there's a website for the open definition, the 2.1 version. Uh, in the last workshop we held in Costa Rica, participants there indicated which were the open definition topics that most deserve to be revised. And for today's session, we are going to work on that top six hot topics that they define as the most important ones. Of course, we'll have also the opportunity to discuss a topic that's not among the six uh, hot topics defined in Costa Rica, because this is a different time, place, and community. Um, but the complete documentation for this session can be found in the link. We'll share this presentation afterwards so you can access all the links. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about what happened there. What happened is that we uh, gave the participants all the topics and asked them to choose the four most important for each person. And then uh, from that, we got the six more chosen ones uh, that were more problematic or that people wanted to discuss the most. And right now, what we are going to do is that we are going to break into groups and you guys get to decide which topic is more uh, important for you to discuss today. Uh, and then uh, we'll facilitate, like we, we give you another pad link and I'll, uh, next slide, please, so I can explain the session dynamics. So um, right now, what we are going to do is that uh, we're going to put on the screen the six topics that were defined in Costa Rica at RightsCon, and you guys get to choose one topic to discuss and gather into a group to discuss that topic. Uh, the groups can have most six people. I think we don't have a very full room, so that's not going to be a problem. Just choose a topic, choose uh, and gather with people that uh, share the same interests. And the facilitators, Angie from Wikimedia Argentina is there, and also the Wikimedia guys are there. So uh, they can help you break into groups. Uh, and um, what do we want? We want you to go to the Etherpad link and... Uh, 
of course, first discussing, but we do need that one person per group to be a note taker. So we can write down like the main outtakes from this discussion. Uh, next slide. So here are the six uh, most discussed topics uh, from the last session, which are machine readability. While machines changed a lot since 2015, uh, and we do feel that we need to talk about it because now uh, there's the machine learning for AI and machines are using the open data to train them. So this was a very hot topic there. Application to any purpose, uh, non-discrimination, attribution, source, no charge, and you, you will leave that's not among those six. You get to choose from the open definition and just input your thoughts in the document. Uh, next slide. Just we, we are going back uh, to that. So that's the Etherpad link. So um, it's Etherpad Wikimedia, open definition Wikimania. So which group should elect a note taker? And at the end, we're coming back here uh, to for you to report back. We have the mic and we can talk about the topics. So um, we'll leave you 15 minutes for this discussion. Maybe Patricia, you should could go back to the to the screen with the topics. People just choose a topic. Um, you can choose a topic and uh, gather into groups. Um, so let's let's start moving uh, in the room and gathering with people that have the same interests. Of course, uh, if you will have the time and there's not much people, we can also discuss more than one topic. Another thing is that we have uh, three volunteers with us who've uh, who've who want to just listen in. So if you could also maybe join these groups just to listen in and get a feel of things, that would be great as well. So if I could request the both of you to join this group, I think we have about four people in that, four people here, which makes a decent group, and you both can you all can divide yourself amongst the groups. Um, if we could have this uh, the the etherpad link once again on screen that would be great and if i request um do you want to ask who the so one is a no Um, sorry, if I can just ask. Also, if you want to go to the Open Definition website, it would be opendefinition.org, and there you can choose other topics if you want. I think we can move back to the topics because both groups have the etherpads open. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Let me know anything you need or if we need to explain something. If anyone has any doubt, please let us know. I'm also leaving the mic here if you have any questions for the speakers who are listening in, and I'll just leave it in the middle.
Uh, I just want to say that if there is more than one group per topic, uh, please acknowledge that in the etherpad, putting group one, two, and three as it is.
Hi guys, we are already 10 minutes in. I see you are really working it on the etherpad. So let's leave five minutes more for discussion and then we come back, okay? Okay, two more minutes before we come back.
Okay, people, uh, let's uh, resume the conversation uh, in the groups and bring it back to the general audience. Let's, uh, as we are not much people in the room, we can have the discussion and report back with the microphone. Um, Rashid, maybe you can help us with that. Uh, group one. Okay. Thank you for that. We're we're going to move to group one. Who would like to? <laughs> group one says the conversation just got started. Uh, but really, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think we can have five more minutes if you'd like. Uh, it's okay because we are not much people. Uh, so yeah, let's let's give give you guys five more minutes. No, I think with <laughs> reference to time, we'll we'll move on on a quick one. Uh, we'll move on with some reporting, but of course, the it's not going to finish as well. <laughs> All right. Oh, just just uh, on a side note, we are going to leave the etherpad open until the end of Wikimania, so you can keep feeding that afterwards. <laughs> so. For, for group one, we basically have more questions than answers. Uh, we have been discussing several uh, issues with, with uh, possible issues with, with the open definition in, the terms, in, in terms of the machine readability um, criteria. So uh, we, we have raised questions about whether portability is something that should be included explicitly in the, in the definition um, and also whether machine readability includes, for example, things that are uh, shared as in a format that is not uh, that is technically machine readable, like an image, but it's not, for example, accessible to screen readers. So not just machines cannot access the data inside, but even people who are using screen readers cannot re read the content there. Uh, so accessibility, portability, these are topics that we are raising here, but we are not really sure that uh, maybe they are covered elsewhere in definition. We are we are not experts in it. And we try to quick, do a quick scan, and <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm missing lots of things. Uh, like uh, content can be in, in a platform, and it's technically licensed in an open form, in an open license. But if it's not easily ported to some other uh, platform, if it if it's doable, but it's not easily doable, uh, it, is that something that we should still consider open? So these are the questions that we are raising, and perhaps they have easy answers, but none of us have them. Um, I think it's pretty good to have more questions than answers right now because that's the kind of discussion we are looking for. And um, I participated on a Who's Knowledge session uh, prior to the Wikimania events and accessibility was a huge topic because yes, today data, open data serves for that purpose also. So uh, thank you for acknowledging that. Uh, shall we go to the other group? Yes, please. Thank you, Angie. So we actually approached the question of uh, application to any purpose. And we discussed three aspects in there. So the first one is like that open may be a problem from the point of view of indigenous groups or indigenous communities. There has been the voicing of fear of inappropriate sharing by third-party institutions, for example, heritage institutions that don't have a, a connection to the communities concerned. There are currently approaches that are pursued in this area. One is like the fair and care principle movement. And then there's also an initiative called local contexts. So we believe that we don't need a change to the open definition as such, but we need an explanatory note that indigenous communities' interests need to be accounted for in the decision-making process of releasing content as open content. So that's for the first point. And the second point uh, that was kind of uh, put forward in your inputs um, to spark the discussion, it's about limitations regarding universal maxims or specific preferences of authors um, that could enter the open definition and respective licenses and we believe that if you don't want to share freely 
just don't share it under an, a free open license and we should not kind of adapt the license to try to cover stuff that is neither free nor open in the uh, definitions that have been accepted so far. Um, yeah, and we don't believe that we will solve the issue of armed conflicts or genocide or whatever through uh, respective licensing texts. Then the, th the third point we just started to raise, we didn't have the time to actually discuss it uh, in more uh, detail. Uh, it's a question, should licenses try to resolve the issues arising from monopoly players using the content or the software commercially? So are we trying to introduce some, or do we accept that clauses are introduced in licenses that prevent monopoly players like uh, Amazon or Microsoft to use software or content for their purposes, even against the commercial interests of those releasing that software or content. And so far we haven't re reached consensus on that, but we didn't have a proper discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your inputs. Uh, actually, during the session in Costa Rica, the indigenous uh, topic came out a lot. We had uh, representatives from various communities from Central America there. And um, not only they wanted to be, uh, to have representation among the council for this decision and this uh, consensus, but they also brought some uh, insights about what open means to their communities, to their culture, and uh, it's really, really different from uh, from um, other communities and um, and from what it's uh, acknowledged in the definition. So yeah, this is an important topic that needs to be uh, discussed. Uh, anything else? We do have some time to uh, talk about. Uh, other topics. I see that you are citing findability also um, on the Etherpad. Does the other group want to add anything else or um, anyone from the team? No, just like, uh, um, well, of course, like, uh, thanks to everyone for like the inputs on the second input of the last group that talk about like the limitations regarding universal maxims. Um, it's also something that happens like a lot in the discussions um, and sometimes it's difficult to understand in the discussion, okay, what is open and what should be open and that maybe there are like completely different discussions, but sometimes are like really interconnected between each other um, because here we are trying sometimes to define, to define, okay, if something is open, what should we understand by open versus that thing should be open. Um, there are like completely different discussions, um, but it's difficult to have one without another sometimes. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that input uh, because it, it reflects a little bit of the problem we have when discussing it. Any other thoughts here in the groups? <laughs> More time to discuss. <laughs> Well, actually, we would like to be discussing this a lot with yes. much more time. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if uh, how many of these uh, sessions are, are being held, but uh, this is clearly an issue that should be um, taken into account when, when we have these discussions. The, the time was really too short. And perhaps even the preparation, we, we at least I came to the session interested in this topic, but I didn't do any like homework. So um, I think it might have been more productive if we had not just a little more time for the discussion, but also uh, a bit more guidance before coming into the session. Nice, thank you. Thank you for, for your input. Um, that's, that's really thoughtful. thoughtful. Um, maybe using communication channels for sharing the link for the open definition. Yeah, I have. But, uh, okay, okay, go on, sorry. Sorry, yeah, no, I have, I have a, a background question probably is, 
do we want to make do we want to make it easier or more difficult to mark something at open as open and maybe it depends of on uh, who are we talking about probably it shouldn't be easy for big corporation to mark something as open if it's not really open we were talking about platforms uh, who say yeah it's open but it's not really then it's it, it isn't really it's difficult to download uh, files for so, something um, something like that but if we are talking about normal people maybe maybe we shouldn't be so restrictive about them um, we shouldn't restrict their, their possibility to mark something as open even if they are i don't know if one example I was making is if I write a book and I uh, put open an open license on it, uh, CC BY, but uh, I publish it only on paper, so I'm not putting the file online by myself. Can I say it is open? Maybe yes, but we don't. Of course, we don't want be a corporation say, oh, we love open open source, and then not really being open source, but. And so maybe, and I understand why the non-discrimination, maybe it can be relevant, so maybe we should discriminate uh, uh, against big corporation, but not uh, uh, not as m little people, maybe. <laughs> you are very tall, you are very tall, but you are not a big corporation, <laughs> sorry. I, I just want to respond to this. I think there are two questions there that we should not conflate. So one thing is making it easier to mark works as open, or not. Another is to make the definition laxer. So th those are two separate things. We want to make the definition clearer and make sure that things that are marked as open really are. But at the same time, we want to make it easy for those works who are open to become to be marked as open. So it's uh, it's kind of a, uh, an issue of, of uh, interface versus clarity. I, I think those are two separate issues. And we don't even need to discriminate about, about, uh, against any particular users of the open definition. If it's clear enough, that means that whatever works do get uh, marked as open are like uh, open, I would say. Maybe I'm, I'm rambling a bit, sorry. Just very short. Um, I think being able to explain to end users what open means, like the first, very, very first slide, it means this and this and this, and then having the rules be very complex for big corporations, like it actually means that, 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 that you have to comply to before you can call it open might be the solution because you have to, users can't understand. They just want to know, what can I do with it? Everything. Okay, cool. What does that mean? Don't worry, we've dealt with that. Label only means that if you can do that. I also want to add, uh, quick, very quickly, <laughs> that um, the open definition uh, isn't the uh, last universal judge for what is open or not at the end, but but um, it will be followed only if uh, it's not too, too convoluted. So I think that if you start adding uh, things to the open definition that are unnecessary or too restrictive, then people will just stop, cease following the okay, FN open definition and start using the, the word as, as they like. There is no real way to stop this usage. So the, the key uh, way to, to do so is to keep the definition clear and feasible to, to follow. Thank you. <laughs> so I would also really um, argue against watering down today's open definition. There's really, we, it's, it's a very important tool we're using in our everyday work and we cannot water down what we mean by open. I agree with I think you kind of said is that all these infrastructural service aspects of making it findable, allowing uh, modifications that can be tracked and all this stuff. We don't need to add that as a burden for the initial publisher and the creator. That's really something for intermediaries. And we should work towards ensuring that as a community, but I don't really think it should enter the definition as such. Thank you.
We are uh, we're heading to the final moments of the session. Thank you so much for your inputs. I do wish that you also comment everything you said in the mic, in the Etherpad, so we can uh, share this afterwards. Please do share the link for the Etherpad with your colleagues that were not present at the session. Uh, Pato, maybe we should go to the end slide for the, for the presentation. Uh, I do feel that you guys are going to bring this discussion to after the event drinks today because uh, there's a lot to talk. I wish we were there to I come to be with you afterwards. Um, as I said at the beginning, um, and it's important to note that this is not the Open Knowledge Foundation Open Definition. This is the Open Definition and the Open Knowledge Foundation is facilitating the discussion and conducting the work, but we do not write the open definition ourselves. Um, Sara can uh, talk a little bit about our network so uh, we can keep working together and collaborating on this topic and others. Uh, go ahead, Sara. Thanks very much, Carol. So as Carol said, we want to acknowledge the fact that the open definition is a much broader piece of work than just the foundation. Um, and um, so that's why I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Open Knowledge Network, which is a network that we support and sustain, uh, connecting open activists uh, and advocates across the globe in 40 different countries and counting. Um, we basically bring these people together uh, under a common vision, uh, which is to unlock information, to create and share knowledge in order to produce positive social change locally. Um, and we recently relaunched the Open Knowledge Network with two very interesting projects that might be interesting for you. Uh, one is the project repository, and there's a QR code there, uh, so you can go and have a look. I'll definitely encourage you to, um, to scroll through it. It's basically a curated list of all the most prominent projects, uh, open projects that the network is working on, and there's a lot of very interesting stuff there that could be inspiring. And you can also add your project if you want in a session below, which is about... Um, open projects in the broader space. Uh, we also curate a list of open knowledge experts that make themselves available for uh, peer um, open movement, movement activists. Um, you can go and have a look at the list. So the other QR code, the second one, um, you can see uh, as the project repository, this is also filterable uh, via country, language, for example, an area of the open uh, where these people are active. And you can basically request the assistance of these people for like mentoring or for like doing a little workshop. This list is curated by uh, by the Open Knowledge Network. So um, we are present in 40 countries, but um, we are always welcoming new people to come and join us. Um, you don't need any particular skill, just a uh, broad interest in, in the open in general, and we would love to work together. So uh, go and have a look at okfn.org slash network uh, to have a look at where we're present. Um, and, and, and also, like, I would encourage you to go and have a look both at the project repository to see what the network is doing and at the global directory. Um, that being said, thank you very much, all of you. Um, as most of you were asking about keeping on this conversation going, and of course, there's so much that needs to be added to the section to the session that we had today. Um, we just wanted to uh, let you know that we have a discuss forum uh, at discuss.okfn.org, and there is, a, there is an ongoing conversation about the review of the open definition. So I'll definitely encourage you to go and have a look there and contribute uh, with further preparation and all the homework that you you can do. Meanwhile. Um, to that discussion. And also there is a website of the Open Definition, Carol mentioned it and Patricia as well. Uh, go and have a look if you're not familiar with it um, or just to see it is available in many different languages. It was actually translated by the network. Um, and then we have, of course, a newsletter, general newsletter for OKFN. Definitely encourage you to go and sign up. Very interesting stuff coming up every month about what you're doing at the foundation, but also what the broader network is doing uh, in all the 40 countries I talked to you about. And last but not least, um, keep the conversation going with the hashtag Open Definition on Twitter, Mastodon, and LinkedIn. Thank you very much. I know it's late for you today. Uh, so um, thanks again for your generous and fantastic contribution. Again, the Etherpad will be open until the end of Wikimania. So in case you have a genius idea tonight, make sure that you write it down on our Etherpad. Thanks all. It was a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, for uh, yeah. I want to thank um, 
Angie uh, and our partners for being there uh, and helping us. Uh, we are kind of avatars in the screen, but we count on you guys to keep the conversation going uh, during the event. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, our speakers, and thank you to Open Knowledge Foundation, Carol, Sada, Pratishti, and Nikesh for joining us. And uh, thanks, everyone, for staying with us and for a great discussion. If we could just add the links to the slides on the Etherpad, because most of the folks in the room have that link, that would be great so that they could access the barcodes and the other information that you shared. And as they said, the Etherpad will be open till the end of Wikimania for any conversations. You could leave your contact details there if you want any further discussions. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you to the speakers. Thank you for joining us at very odd hours and very early in the morning. So whenever we meet next, the coffee is on us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Enjoy the rest of the week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.